that um, she uh, emailed me and said, I don't know if I uh, knew anything about uh, Nicholson's, especially the blackness of Nicholson. Do I know anything about him? Is that when I was five years old, my grandmother was uh, taking me to the house to, uh, she would make a pie and take it to the house. And I forget it was whether Mr. Nicholson or Mr. Watkins. It was a spooky house. I didn't have to get out. It was dark in there. And uh, he was deaf. And she would talk to him through, I forget the name of the instrument, but you talk at it and you get the person. Uh,
But I found out a lot of things, and if anybody knows more, feel free to pipe up. I, I, I knew from Janet, where'd she go? That there, there were a couple of Nicholsons at Batstow, mm -hmm. which I'd love to see if we can find mm -hmm. them. I think the State Museum at Trenton has a couple, and they don't know where theirs are. Wow. So yeah. it's been a challenge. We're about to see more Nicholsons than anybody's ever compiled in one place. Yeah. And probably more Nicholsons than you want to see. And for that, I apologize. But I will try to make it lively. And I'm sorry that the Hamilton part of it is just the end of his life. He, in Salem, Salem, New Jersey, Salem County, they call him the Salem Painter. They have two famous painters from Salem, neither one real famous, but one is Nicholson. And here in Hamilton, we call him the Hamilton Painter. They had him early, he was born there. Then he had his career in Philadelphia. You know, it was the look, closest urban area. I'm just going to have to start because it wants to go to the screensaver all the time. Uh, he had his real career in Philadelphia, painted there for probably 40 years or maybe a little more. Um, and then he retired here. And one of the things that I found out through Bill, but actually from Mr. Measley, Carlton Measley, um, Mr. Measley grew up in the painter's house, which is not the Raymond house now, but a house that's no longer there. The uh, Mealy's had it a little bit, there was a little gap, and it was after Nicholson had the house, Nicholson the painter. The, Richard, the Raymonds have, I, you know, I didn't grow up here, so you have to bear with me. The Raymonds have a sign that says Nicholson, but I haven't bugged them enough to go over there and see it yet, but I'm really curious to see it. So, uh, should we do lights? Can we do most of the lights and a little bit in the back, maybe? Uh, no, I'm not good. Mm -hmm. Dave, just all that's it. It's fine. That's good. I, I, I don't have a clicker for this, so I just kind of have to go up and whoop, change it. What I did was put together, and where am I going to stand? I put together a show of Nicholson paintings for the Noise Museum. I took the idea to them. I think it's about two and a half years ago now. And they thought it was a great idea. And they said, well, how about a year from spring? And I went, ah, I've only started researching the artist. How am I possibly going to find enough paintings, put this whole thing together? But I, I thought, well, if they're, they're going for it, I'll just say yes. So I said yes. And then I did a whole lot of research summer a year ago and spent the whole fall and into the beginning of 2008 looking for the paintings. And this really is the story of rediscovering George Washington Nicholson. Does anyone do genealogical research? I imagine in the historical society, some of you might. It was a little bit like that, only I would approach these librarians and they would say, well, who's your grandfather? I'd say, well, I'm not related to this guy, but I'm looking for an artist named George Washington Nicholson. This is the catalog cover. We did a little catalog. Um, regrettably couldn't publish everything in it. Not all the pictures are in it but a number of the pictures from it. This is one of very few pictures that I have of the artist. Doesn't he look like an artist? <laughs> the beard and the sort of, I'm imagining corduroy or velvet and smoking jacket with, I call them frogs, and I don't know yeah, if that's right. Frogs, 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 frogs yeah, and frog yeah. closings. I just think that's adorable. I only have pictures of him as an old man, though. I have not found any young pictures of Nicholson. He was a Salem County descendant of um, the Quakers who came over with John Fenwick. His ancestor was actually a Samuel Nicholson who came over with Fenwick. This is his, I don't know, several greats, great, 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 great grandfather's house. Abel was Samuel's son, so that's one of those very early Dutch, uh, not Dutch, I'm sorry, English brick houses with patterns. And all of these are in the Elsinboro neighborhood south of Salem. So the artist has roots going way back in New Jersey. He's really a New Jersey artist. He just happened to have a career in Philadelphia. I'm thinking they are running off the edges a little bit, but that's OK. So I did what people do who do genealogical research. I looked him up in the census records. I found his mother and father. This is Mary B. Nicholson. And Daniel looks funny, but it's Daniel Nicholson. And I don't know which one he is, but there's George and a sibling in you know the column for a certain age group. Uh, and Dan this is Daniel, the father, in a certain age group, and that's all I know. He was one of 14 kids. Mm -hmm. Poor mom. 
Ten survived, which was pretty good. Uh, born in 1832. And I've just got Google Maps. I love Google. I do everything on Google. You can even get these still photos of Google shots. Here's Mannington Township. It's just north of Salem a little bit, northwest, northeast, I'm sorry. Um, and he grew up in Mannington. I've got him in, let's see, this is the 1850 census. He moved into Salem. Here's George W. Nixon. He was living with a couple named Woodruff. And they were house painters. He was 17, so I'm assuming this was his first real job. He was an apprentice. He was living with the professional house painter who was only, what, 27? His wife is 25. And they had two, probably two apprentices living with them. So he starts off painting houses and I guess had other aspirations. After 1850, I don't have anything definite for about a decade. He was in Philadelphia by 1860, about. But I have this painting, uh, which is owned by a man who used to live here in Hamilton and now lives in Collinswood. And we think it's a portrait of the artist's mother, and we think it's the earliest Nicholson that there is. And it's certainly a, an older woman from the, about the right time period. Doesn't have a signature. I wish it had a signature. He didn't. He signed a lot of things, but he didn't date much. You know, he didn't put dates on things. He was preceded by the other Salem painter, George, I just love this, George Washington Canero, who lived in Salem and went to Philadelphia and had a career as a portrait painter. And this is just a portrait by Canero. Canero left Salem about two years before my George was born. But it was sort of a model. It was someone to emulate. It was life as an artist. Someone from Salem made big, made good in the big city. So my George, when he's maybe 20 or thereabouts, leaves Salem and goes to Philadelphia, um, where he meets. This is uh, census again. This is what 1860. I think it's 1860. Yeah. Joe. Oh, there. Oh, thanks. I typed that there. <laughs> Just forgot. <laughs> he met Job F. Bray, who listed himself as an artist and had previously listed himself as a sign painter. And these were various ways that people left the craft or the trade and moved into the fine art category. People started as engravers. They started as daguerreotypists, taking photographic portraits. Uh, they started as house painters. They started as sign painters. Joe Bray had a wife, Jane. I know it looks like June, but we have lots of records that say Jane. And we also had a son, uh, John Thomas, who was an engraver. Another son was a blacksmith. And he had a daughter, Jane, named Jenny. I can't prove that my George Nicholson was Joe Bray's apprentice, but I can prove that my George Nicholson was Joe Bray's son-in-law. George married Jane, the daughter, uh, who's 20 here in whatever, 1860. So they married in 63 and had one child in 64 and mother died. Jenny Bray died. Jenny Bray Nicholson died. Uh, so only the one son who was the one who came to Hamilton, who partnered with Watkiss, first as an apprentice and then as a partner, and they had a, a nursery business and florist shop. This is the next earliest painting that I have, and it's a little awkward. I'm not going to be too critical of it because I'm so excited to know about it. But look how big the people are. They're a little awkward. And how small the setting is relatively, and how little the landscape is. This is the opposite of what he'll decide he's good at. What he decides he's good at is, oh, they are running off the edge a little bit. gets the more they're going to fit on it. Just look at the relative proportion of people to landscape, what he's good at or what he was good at. I, for me, I guess he's still alive. What he's good at is the landscape. The figures are good. They're just not great. He decided he wasn't so good at this and did do that and did that very well and really made a name for himself in Philadelphia. Not, uh, not, not the top tier. He was definitely the second tier of Philadelphia painters. You know, not as famous as uh, the Moran brothers or Sartain the Engraver. I know that one was maybe not famous for everybody. I'm trying to think who's more famous. 
Here's a signature from that very early painting. He signed lots of paintings, and that's really unusual. Geo W. Nicholson with upright lettering. I thought maybe I could figure out dates if I looked at all the signatures. And there aren't many that are upright like that, and he never did this geo again. But for the life of me, I still can't put his whole chronology together. He did this back slant a lot, and here I've got it in 1883. I've looked at a lot of these. I've taken a lot of pictures of signatures. And he did that little underline with two cross hatches a lot. I just bumped the screen. Always with a back slant. There's just that one very early signature where it's upright and it's geo. We think he took classes rather unofficially at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts. This is the way the building looks now, but it's an 1870 building. And he took classes there before this building was constructed. He was taking classes in the early 60s. It's a great building. You really have to go there if you haven't gone there. It's fantastic. And it's got great American art. And this is not actually them. This is some other studio, but he probably studied um, from their great plaster cast collection. They have plaster casts of Michelangelo's David, you know, the 15 foot tall guy with no clothes on. Um, Venus de Milo, the lady with no arms. They've got a number of Renaissance sculptures and ancient statues in plaster cast versions. And the artists would do sculptures based on them and also sketch those. So he took classes, but it was very informal. And the only other painting I've got from around then is this self-portrait. It's just three studies. Everybody looks at it and says it looks so surreal. But it's just an artist turning the canvas and trying his own face. You know, he, he's sort of looking down in a mirror and looking over the canvas and sketching his face from slightly below, the mirror slightly below him. And that was the one that worked out best, so he kept going on that one. It's just three attempts at a, a self-portrait. Like I said, I only have photographs of him as an older man, but I'm convinced. I think it's him. The straight nose, you know, gets a little bigger in old age. Uh, not so lined here, but that broad brow. Look at this outline. A slight sort of dent, indentation in the middle of the forehead. Small, I want to say rosebud lips. That sounds like they have a crush on me. Um, curly big ears. I think it's him. He had a number of students. Um, starting in the early 1860s, this, uh, these are paintings by his students. Some of whom worked in a similar manner and some of whom diverged pretty much. I have Braid, that one. Joseph Jefferson was an actor. He was one of a series of actors all named Joseph Jefferson. There was J.J. the first, J.J. the second, J.J. the third, J.J. the fourth. And I don't know if this is third or fourth. Well-known actor of the day. Uh, Harrington Fitzgerald, a journalist, painted this. Um, Arlington Linden Mott, who was a photographer, professional photographer, painted this. And this looks later. It looks sort of impressionistic. The style is very different. These two are probably the most like Nicholson. I don't have a sorver, although um, we talked about Mamie Vaughn, right? Mamie Vaughn's granddaughter? Daughter. Cindy. Cindy. Right. Has a little sorver painting of a bird, which has to have been a gift from the student to the teacher. I just think that's interesting. OK, you don't have to be fast. I, I'm a little obsessive. Um, Looking for records, I could never found le letters. I never found sketchbooks. I never found diaries. Oh, diaries would be fabulous. Yeah, and anybody here, many, you know, just let me know. Let Bill know. He'll let me know. I found it's amazing. What you can find on the internet. I found a record of his passport application. Uh, does anybody see the date? It's 1860. Six. Six. Sounds right. Yeah. I still see it. Right down in the bottom. Yep. There you go. March 1866, and I'm pretty sure he traveled with a friend because the very next one sequentially, see Nicholson's passport application is 14,317, and the very next one is 14,318, and they signed, wait, here's Nicholson, here's William Cragmile or Creedmile. 
his family was in a carpet business in Philadelphia. They had carpet stores and a factory all over the city. And they signed for each other uh, when you, what do you, like notarize, you act as the witness for the other person. Um, so Craig, here's Craig Miles' signature as a witness that, yes, this is my buddy Nicholson. And here's Nicholson's signature, yes, this man is really William Craig Miles. So I have them going to, um, on their grand tour. And I have photos of, photos of a sketchbook. This is a little bit distant from actually looking at the artist's sketches. But I know there were at least two sketchbooks. Um, some of the scenes look American, some of the scenes look European. I know he was in England, and I'm pretty sure he was in France. And beyond that, it's a little bit of a mystery. This painting is owned by the great-great-nephew of the artist, who lives in the uh, beyond Wilmington, um, I'll think of it, in Delaware. And it's a, an inn in London. It doesn't have to have been done there, but that's the problem. He could have sketched it. He could have based it on a photograph. He did this little painting on a Sunday morning in Surrey, which is just so British, a man walking out of his cottage and smoking that funny long pipe. So I'm just going to bounce around to where I think he went, or at least where I know he painted paintings. Not where he painted them, subjects he painted. This is a beautiful and spectacular painting that I tried so hard to get for the show, and the couple who own this have it in their dining room in Oxford, Pennsylvania, and they just didn't want it to leave the house. You know, this is the centerpiece of the dining room. So this is, we think, uh, Mont Saint-Michel, the island off the north coast of France. And there's pretty good evidence. Oh, that's just a photograph of the real place up uh, there. Another family has a much smaller one. Those are sort of relative sizes of the two paintings. So I'm pretty sure he was in France. And I'm pretty sure, because there are some records to substantiate it, that he studied with a French painter named Isabelle. And the styles look a lot alike. I, I don't have, you know, what a genealogist would like. The, the letter that says, Dear Monsieur Isabelle, thank you so much for the lessons in 1866. I don't have the absolute confirmation. But I have beautiful seascapes by Nicholson that I, I don't know. I don't know any. <laughs> I told Bill, I have three kids, I don't, I don't, I was told this man here. I don't buy any art, I'm saving for colleges, for daughters. But I have slides of Nicholson paintings of shipwrecks on coasts with stormy skies and that sort of romantic 19th century French feel that are very much like the paintings by his supposed teacher. Um, and the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris has a little Nicholson. I have yet to to get a response from them on how they acquired it. You know, it could have been a gift from anybody. It could have been a gift in 1866 from someone who got it from the artist. It would just be nice to know. It's a, a cloister man in a church cloister. 